Hey, we made it out of that disaster and we're starting off at this campground here. It's been super relaxing. We've been very productive getting stuff done. I've been working, Danny's working. We're chowing down and enjoying having really good sun, a shower and a bathroom very close by. And this campground is owned by a German, so he's got a whole German menu, which we tried out last night, and a whole bunch of different German beers, which we also had with a lot of the other campers around. And yes, there are campers <laughs> for the first time in so long. I've seen a whole bunch of campers. We, are, we actually expected this in Ecuador. Um, we figured there would be a lot of people waiting around for Peru to open. A lot of them had left their car here since the beginning of the pandemic and came back a couple times. At first there was 22 vans here. It has been the best way to recharge after that debacle with the oil pan. <laughs> oh, and update on the oil pan is no leaking. <laughs> you got me, you got me. Why didn't you say hello? I was gonna scare you, you didn't come in. <laughs> I'm cleaning up. You still scared me though. Danny, what? How are you? That is hilarious. Boom! <laughs> So for one of our first looks in Ecuador that's not super dramatic, we have a beautiful crater lake here. So nice. This is not too far from our last campsite. You're right, we're able to circumnavigate it, but we came here a little bit late because we did get some vegetarian food. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to completely circumnavigate it. They say it takes about five hours to do that eight and a half miles with a thousand feet elevation gain so we'll see how far we make it it's a pretty nice hike either way beautiful views i mean the whole time and it's free perfect first stop it's called godokachi and you can also take a little boat over to those islands in the center of the lake for three dollars and fifty cents Such a good view out here. Crater rocks are always the best because you have such an epic view the entire time. Right now we're at 10,400 elevation, which is pretty high and I'm kind of winded actually walking up that bit. That last bit, it was a little steep. Looks like we have one more steep bit over there and mosquitoes are coming, we have to keep walking. <laughs> such a beautiful place we found over here thanks to iOverlander once again. We did get here a little bit late, so we're not gonna be able to circumnavigate the entire crater, but we've made it about a quarter of the way after checking the map, and we only have an hour and a half left to walk before the place closes, so we're gonna get a move on. It's still a beautiful place. We're so happy we got to enjoy it, got to enjoy this nature, and man, I, I'm so far, I'm loving the way that, that Ecuador national parks have treated their environment. No horses, no beautiful trail, very well marked, everything, I loved it. Oh, and the best part, it was, it was free. So there was a lot of families walking around on the hike, which is so good to see when they can go places without having to pay for anything and enjoy the outdoors. The only thing that we couldn't do is bring some Rita. I'm pretty sure there's animals out here that they don't want dogs to disturb. The whole Pan American in Ecuador is like volcano, volcano, volcano. We're really excited to show you guys all these beautiful places, volcanoes. We are super close to the equator now. So hopefully we can check that out. Oh, 
Oh, it just feels so good to be in such good nature. It feels like Ecuador is gonna be a big place for camping and heading outside, which that's what we always look for whenever we're traveling. All right, I wanna show you guys something special. Although we've been in Ecuador a few days, we're about to do our first fill up. I'm gonna do a little bit of research. Turns out there's two kinds of gasoline here, super and extra. Which one you think's better? Super is better than extra. You would think extra was extra, but super is extra. Super, super extra. Super is 92 octane, and the other extra is 82 octane. 85 is pretty low for in the US, so wow, my ears are popping. Ecuador is so high elevation. Hello, buenas tardes. Can I have an extra, por favor? Sí. No es diesel, es gasolina, sí. Ah, oh, es a mano. Sí, gasolina. No, no. <laughs> 55 gallon. That's more than it was in Colombia. How many times did you ask me if it was diesel? <laughs> Everybody always thinks it's diesel, huh? Yeah. Let's give this kid a, a granola bar. Yeah. Okay. 52.65 for 20.5 gallons. So, playing credit card. Another big thing about getting gas. Adios. Further south is they pump it for you. <laughs> Unless you're in Oregon or New Jersey, you're pumping your own gas. But I haven't pumped gas in two years. <laughs> We did it! Woohoo! Yeah. Made it to the equator! Wow, it's hard to overstate how important this moment is yeah. on our trip. We have been driving this Pan American Highway and now we've made it halfway across the planet Earth. <laughs> this feels so good. We've been waiting for this for so long. I remember like we were in Mexico and we were like, oh my gosh, we're never going to make it down there. And now we're here. We're at the equator. Yeah, it feels like an epic, huge moment in the trip, even though it's just an imaginary line. Yeah. You can see here on our map, here is the equator right here. And we're about right there. Oh my gosh. When we walk over here, they're going to have this big sundial at the equator and that marks halfway of the planet Earth. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes, we did it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there's a really big history in maritime travel yes. for navies and whatnot of crossing the equator, you get your shell back. And so we actually have a shell back award with us here from my great grandpa. My great grandpa crossed the equator at Ave Mama during World War II. And my dad gave me the, a copy of the Shellback Award. Crossing the equator just feels like such an achievement for us. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All the ups and downs we've been through. Wow. So now we're going to go flush the toilet over there, see which way it spins. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you guys along with us as we cross the equator, this huge momentous occasion for the van from the Arctic Ocean, crossing the Arctic Circle, crossing the Tropic of Cancer, and now the equator. We made it. Yeah, we made it. Oh my. And I never imagined that at the equator, we would be wearing coats at night. You know, we still have the down comforter yeah, on over here. It's pretty cold. Well, let's go check out the monument. On the phone, let's see when it says zero. So right now we're still at zero, zero, one. Ooh, Zero! <laughs> We're at the equator! <laughs> so not oh only gosh. is there a museum here, but it's corroborated, corroborated by the phone. By the smartphone. <laughs> but, and Here's, then, so we're gonna try and cross it? 
Okay, this is the actual line that they have set up. So you got. Obsidian. You need to put one side of your body in both. Oh yeah. Look at that. Emily is half and half. North and south hemisphere. That's me. You divided. <laughs> okay, so here's the line. And it says zero? Yep. Okay, and let's see how far. So this is the direction of north. Yep. And it still says zero? Still says zero. Don't trip. <laughs> zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. zero, zero. Ooh, one! One! We crossed, <laughs> we walked across the equator. So we had to go about that far. <laughs> Either direction confirmed. Yay! So we we're going to tell you guys a couple of things we learned here. So you see this line to the north is actually where the sun will rise at its most extreme end on the north, which would be the solstice. And that means if you're up in Alaska, you got constant daylight. And then on the other side, that is where the sun rises from here on the other solstice. And apparently even before the Incas, they had already figured this all out and created over 200 different sites here that you can explore. In the very center, the dial of the sundial, when you're here on the right day, two days a year, there will be a moment at noon when the sun is directly ahead and there's no shadow at all inside of that dial on the two equinoxes. There was some really funny stuff in the bathroom about which way the water spins in the toilet. The reason that researchers come to Ecuador to research the equator is because it's easier to hit the mountains that are around the equator here. In other countries, it's flat or jungle, or here it's a lot easier to find our way. Welcome to the equator, guys! Woohoo! They have a really great garden here. So we're here in Ecuador and of course, you know the top destination in this country is the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands have been a place we've always wanted to check out. There are four inhabited islands, Santa Cruz being the biggest city, then San Cristobal, Santa Isabela, and Floriana. Surrounding these islands are loads of islands only inhabited by the amazing animals that have evolved separately to thrive on them. We're really close to Quito now, and that's actually where some of the flights fly out of to get to the Galapagos. Quito is also a huge expat town. So uh, about a week ago, Danny wrote on the expat Facebook group asking if anyone would be able to watch our pets while we head to the Galapagos. He did get a bunch of replies, but really only one followed through and we met her last night and she was so great. She agreed to watch Graham the whole time and he's gonna be the only cat in her house. She's had cats before, foster cats and also her own cats. She's also a teacher here, so she's a math teacher. She teaches at the International School and we're just so happy that Graham is gonna have a very safe spot that he's not gonna be stressed out with other cats because the hotel honestly didn't really work out for him the last time. So Brita, on the other hand, having a dog is more of a full-time job than a cat, so there weren't really anyone that was able to take care of Sombrita for the whole time. Sombrita really did enjoy the hotel the last time we were there. She was excited to see us at the end, of course, but the videos that we got sent every day, she loved playing with the dogs and she was super tired out and everything like that. So I found a really good hotel for Sombrita um, they are also going to wash her and give her the vaccines that she actually needs. So we have the pets figured out and the next thing is the plane. We have decided to get a plane three days before we go to the Galapagos. Uh, it's pretty insane. I don't know anyone else that has done it like this, but we're, this is a once in a lifetime thing. And also, honestly, flights are pretty cheap when you're booking three days away. So we had no idea last week we were going to go to the Galapagos. We just thought we want to go and then we looked at each other and we said, let's just go now. So we booked our flight and it was 383 total. It said online that uh, foreigners have to pay more 
for their ticket. But on TripAdvisor, it said that some people didn't have to pay more. But if we don't, it's fine. We, we're expecting to pay more at the airport. It's no big deal. And then once we get off the plane, we also have to pay $100 each in cash for the national park fee, which is quite expensive as well. But that's just what you have to do. Everyone has to do it to get into the Galapagos. So here we go trying to plan a week's worth of activities for this amazing Galapagos trip that we want to have. Luckily, when you do it this close to when you want to be there, the prices drop dramatically. Maybe you won't get on the specific itinerary, which I think is why a lot of travelers would rather just pay for the security of, you know, that's what that's what's going to happen. I'm going to get what I want. But we're kind of like, we know what we want. We can do it on our own or we can find a half price cruise. The very important thing I want to do is scuba dive at a place called Kicker Rock or Leon Dormido, which is supposed to have hammerhead sharks. And they are my favorite shark. I just have loved watching videos about hammerhead since I was a kid. I'm so excited to see these amazing animals and oh my gosh, I hope we get to do it. That's the only thing I really have been like, I want to do this very bad. The giant tortoises, oh my gosh. We're gonna be flying into Santa Cruz. That's really the only confirmed plan that we have right now. It's pretty fun to just go with the flow sometimes. But we got the pet stuff figured out, we got the van parking figured out, and we're really excited to take you guys along. So another awesome thing that just happened with our Galapagos planning is that the COVID tests are no longer required, which cuts off another $80 off of our trip. So fantastic. And also we don't have to run around looking for a PCR test and everything like that. You have to either show your fully vaccinated vaccine card or show a PCR test. Uh, one more thing is that we did not plan to do all of this right now. So we had just gone grocery shopping. So today we are trying to eat every bit of vegetable that we ran in here. Okay, so here's one of our mega veggie meals to get rid of all of our veggies before we on to the Galapagos. I'm gonna make some Thai curry with a whole bunch of veggies. I'm, I'm gonna put some coconut milk in it, these diced tomatoes, red curry paste, broccoli, pepper, zucchini, and mushrooms. And also there's some onions that are already on the stove. Wish me luck, I hope this tastes good. It's gonna be a lot of our veggies. Ooh, it's looking so delish. I put it all in one pot because we're just gonna share. <laughs> Minimum work today on feeding ourselves, but also a lot of work on trying to get all these vegetables out of here. I also cut up bits of our bread so that we can dip it into this nice curry that I made and also eat the rest of the bread because that definitely will not stay for a week either. Oh man, it smells delicious though. I'm gonna eat this up. Look at this cat playing fetch. <laughs> he brings it back, he bounces on it. Oh, he dropped it on my shoulder a ton of times now. <laughs> I'll try again, my hands. Oh, Emily. Is this is from me. Oh, thanks, my guy. <laughs> so, now how many cats play fetch? <laughs> oh, here comes the. Put your hand right in front of me. That is ridiculous. Yep, nope, nope. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys next time for some serious adventure in the Galapagos Islands. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. It's free and it helps us a lot. See you next time.